Showtime. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Ready. ready? This is the Bob and Jeff Show, starring Jeff Lutz. It's been my show for a few years now. I, I quietly of... took it over. I am so totally turned on right now, I could spit. In Jason Duda, for today anyway. Do they call you dudes or dudesy? No, usually the Canadian. Fun, man. I love it. Absolutely love it. Wouldn't want it any other way there. You poor thing. You have to grow up in Canada. With America right there. 97.5 in 1240 KFH. Stand by for action. Good afternoon and welcome. It is Bob and Jeff on KFH for the fourth straight show. It's not just Bob and Jeff or Bob and Jeff at all, as it were yesterday, Friday, and today. I am Jeff, however. I am joined today by Jason Duda, who is not ready, who is not ready for what I have to bring today. No, and I've, oh, I did I, the show four times last week and today, so like I, I, I'm just just throw it out there. You get, I know you want to. You're feeling this way. You're all peppy. You haven't been on the show since Thursday. Let everybody have it. Here you go. The floor is yours. <laughs> the Jeff. floor is mine, just like that. Go to town. Well, it's enjoy it's, your day. It just becomes it just becomes upsetting to me. When it's you and Bob doing the show, and I'm not there to check what you guys are saying. And I was listening on oh. delay uh, on Friday, so I couldn't call in when you said something ridiculous. I don't remember exactly what I, I think I was listening on delay yesterday, in fact, uh, when Bob said something insane. And just nobody there. You're like, oh, yeah, cool. And then I uh, go we'll talk to you later. And no one calls anybody on anything, and it's just this love fest that makes me absolutely <laughs> sick. Yesterday? Yeah. Did you listen to the whole show? No. Exactly. So you probably caught the part well, where we were, we were going to be nice to each other. There were 11 interviews. What were you not being nice to each other about? Do you think I can remember that? Maybe. When you go home after we do a show, can you remember what we talked about? I try not to. The only th- time I remember is if someone says, hey, when you guys were talking about such and such, then it clues in. I guess. If not, it's like two hours of just talking, and then I don't remember. Well, good. Let me refresh your memory. I'll oh, start. Oh, so I'll excited. S- I'll start with Bob. Okay. Who is insane uh, to a level, again, that needs to be checked by somebody, whether it's me, a physician, uh, I don't know. I don't know what he needs, but he needs some kind of intervention. He's got the Chicago Cubs signing Shohei Otani. I know. Cody Bellinger, Aaron Nola. No, no, no. See, we just said, okay, for instance. But he's if, and he was throwing names out there. Right. Just to throw them out there. It wasn't no, like that wasn't that was Bob trying to exert his well oh, they no. might, when Jeff, he gets into his little you serious said, Tom Brokaw voice, well they might go get Aaron Nola and the Cubs sure are a force to be reckoned with this year. I hope the Cardinals manage to keep up with them and make some moves of their own. When you know when Bob starts getting like that, you know <laughs> that he's feeling himself to a degree that's gonna make a lot of people uncomfortable. Okay, so you cut just that part because that's no. not that's not how that whole thing went. Well, let it let was just... like because uh, I said, well, if they get Shohei, they're going to have to get somebody else, right? And so he said, well, just throw names out there. No, he wasn't. Just, and again, yeah, he was. And he said, Bob. and then he said, Aaron Nola just for one of the pitchers that are going to be in free you agency. You got to know Bob. Well, I don't. Obviously, I don't know then because it to me was just okay. We're just talking hypothetically. Okay. Just throwing a name out there because I said they need more than if they do sign Shohei, they need to put something else around them too. Cubs were so pretty good we last year. Threw, yeah, but th- if they throw a couple more out there with them, then they're going to be really good. Perhaps. Well, if you're going to go get Shohei and spend that money, then you might as well spend a little bit more and okay. make your team really sure. good. So Fair enough. According to The Athletic, uh, which, you know, is a source you may or may not trust. We're watching Pat McAfee on ESPN right now. He does not trust The Athletic, uh, as he's made clear over the past couple weeks. Uh, They have those three guys as the number one, two, and four impact free agents. What do you think the total value of those three contracts are as projected by The Athletic? Well, the problem is is is, I don't know what Shohei's going to get. Because are you well, paying just, them for doing both? Are you paying them just well, to just hit this year? Yes. 
Well, he's, three contracts. He's going to be half a million. Okay. So you're looking at a billion dollars. No, it wasn't quite that much. It well, was eight. if you're asking me what I think, that's okay. what I think. Well, I'm telling you, it wasn't quite that much. It was well, eight, according to the athletic, right? It was eight hundred and sixty million. Yeah, well, they'll be low if they get five twenty for Shohei, one eighty for Bellinger, one sixty for Nola, which is reasonable. Well, but I guess the other side is how how long are these contracts going to be? I think one was ten. Sho- Shohei's, Shohei's got to be ten, and I think the other two were six. Okay, well then that would make so I I'm going off of so you think three the, ten year deals. So I don't think and I'm and maybe maybe and, Bob and it could be anywhere in that range. Maybe Bob in two months will be back on here. I told you that the Cubs and hopefully now the Cardinals make a move to keep up with the Chicago Cubs and uh the Pirates are coming too, and maybe even the Reds. So when he's talking like that in, in a month and the Cubs got all these guys, I'll bow to him. Okay? You'll bow. To I will him. bow to him. Okay. If the Cubs, I'll put a number. If the Cubs spend uh, seven hundred and fifty million in total value for free agents, I will bow to Bob. Ooh, seven fifty or more. Wow. Are you just mad because they signed counsel from underneath you? No, I'm happy with the manager. We. I didn't really think we were going to get counsel. I thought there was a remote possibility just because it had dragged on for a little bit and he hadn't made a decision and. You know, we hadn't named Obvious, the manager. Obviously, this is why he was holding out for a little bit. Right. Because it wasn't like this happened overnight for $8 million a year. Yeah, it's a lot of money Cleveland's for, not for a gonna, manager. Cleveland's not paying that. No, we were paying Francona $4.5 million as the highest paid manager in the game last year. So, no, I don't, I don't think they would value Craig Council much more than they valued Terry Francona, who I would consider... At least as good of a manager and probably better. Well, there you go. And here's what you said. Oh, please. On Friday. Okay. When you were talking about basketball, talking about the NBA, which you hate. I do. You hate the NBA. I do. But you called the Spurs of the 90s and early 2000s fun. Fun. Were they fun? They were fun to watch. They were just oh. Manu dribbling out there. Yeah, just, Tim Duncan no shooting off the backboard. Tim, uh, you knew it was coming. Here it comes. 73 you know to 68 where it was games. Be. The general Robinson out there just being the man well, inside. Well, not for very long. Yeah, still, he was still there. Still there for a little bit. You hated Love those it. teams. Love and, the San and Antonio my other, Spurs. My other bone to pick is when you call the Pacers not fun. And now I have some Who numbers. Who said they were not fun? You. You keep saying they're not I fun. I said, I asked you, and you're like, well, they're not. it wasn't fun. So I'm like, well, if it's not fun, then why are you watching? Here's, and then they finally have a big game, and now they're fun again. Here are This is numbers. standard Jeff. Do you want some numbers to back oh, it up, or do you not well, want some you, numbers? Uh, you, you're, want, you're loving this. Yeah, hit me with some Who's numbers. Who's leading the league in scoring average? Who's I, scoring the most points per game in the NBA? Oh, I don't know, Jeff. Could you tell me? It's the Indiana Pacers. No. The Indiana Pacers are fourth in field goal percentage. They are second in three-pointers made. They are sixth in three-point percentage. They are first in assists. So this is a team that moves the ball, scores a lot, plays fast, and you say they're not fun. Explain yourself. And they give up the second most points in the league as well. They do? Uh, yes, Jeff. No, that can't be right. It's funny how that you just, you're just going to rattle off what you want with numbers <laughs> and then, oh, really? It's the third most. They're tied for second most. No, they're tied 121. for third most. 121.7. With the, yeah, they're tied for third most. Ahead of the Spurs and the Wizards. So there's two, two teams sorry. we absolutely put it to this sorry. year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So they're tied for third worst. I apologize. I missed that by one. Well, we gave up a lot to the Celtics. And that skews the number a little bit. Also, when you're scoring 150, the other team's going to get a chance to score too. Why? Why wouldn't you play defense? Because it's, it's that fast-paced game. Uh, play some defense. I mean, you got to play and also, defense. you're getting on me for liking the Pacers. Because uh-huh. you don't like the NBA because, oh, some guys go to t- these different teams and join up. And here we have the Pacers who are building through the draft, who are making shrewd trades. Anyway. I like that. Anyway, that's my little. I like that. That's yeah, good. You, so you, maybe you should like the Pacers. No, I don't like the Pacers. But thanks for asking. I'm going to take you to their game in Oklahoma City. Are you? Yeah. No, thanks. No, we're going to go. Okay. 
I'm buying what, the tickets. What, when's, when is it? It's in March. Whew, yeah, okay. I'll tell you I'm going right now for sure. Cool. Yeah. We'll look, we'll uh we'll make plans. Yeah. Guaranteed. Here's the show today. That wasn't the show. That was just the, That could have been the show. That was just a little preamble that to the show. That was a rant? Show. Yeah. That was a bit of a rant. Is well, what I that had was. a lot stored up. Why? Be, uh, because as I said, you guys need to be checked by somebody. Checked? And if, and if it has to be me, then so be it. Oh, it's always you. Always. Which is good. You and KU Pat, I can always count on. Thank you. KU You're Pat welcome. for different... Different elements. Absolutely. Making picks. But I appreciate, about I appreciate both of you. At 225, we'll talk to Matt Beeler, the head coach of the Conway Springs Cardinals. Speaking of the Cardinals, I sure hope they do something. <laughs> oh, just an extra shot in there. Uh, <laughs> they have won eight games in a row. They're eight and two. They're into the uh, quarterfinals of the 1A tournament, 1A football tournament. Uh, they'll play Marion on Friday on the road. They won eight in a row. Not bad. They started 0-2 with losses to Garden Plain and Kingman and then have rattled off eight in a row. So good job for the Cardinals. Matt Beeler, longtime coach of Conway Springs, joins us uh, in the next segment. And then in the segment after that, Friends University basketball coach Phil McClintock. Why are we talking to the Friends University basketball coach? Tell me. Because they play... Wichita State on Sunday. Well, then that makes sense. They play a very difficult game on Saturday against Oklahoma City University and then turn around and play the Shocks on Saturday, Sunday. Saturday, Sunday? Yes. Is that Sunday game at Friends? No, of I course didn't, not. I didn't think so. <laughs> It'd be cool. I can't was, believe though. you actually answered that, but I'm glad you did. No, you, you for a second. Could you be jam packed in there? That would be cool. Standing Why not? room only. Speaking of, I think it's that, good they're playing. I, I, of course, I think that's great. I like it. Yeah, but it doesn't tell us anything about Wichita State, and that's what most no. But it gets me. you a game. Plus, it gets you them playing friends. I mean, I like it. Why not? Early in the season, just play a game. I hear you. So, did you watch Wichita State last night? I did not. I watched a half, and then some other things uh, came up. But I did watch a half. They beat uh, Lipscomb handily. It wasn't really ever a game. Lipscomb made a few threes early and kind of stayed in it, but that's all they were doing, at least in the first half that I saw, was shooting a whole bunch of threes. Well, they shot 37 of them. And too many. It's, yeah. I mean, they weren't that good. They were missing their leading score. I get that. They were undersized. Uh, Wichita State dominated them physically. Um, but it's a win over Lipscomb. And Colby Rogers was the uh, breakout guy for at least that game. One of them, they had three. Colby Rogers played excellent. Isaac Abide played extremely well, and so did Quincy Ballard. So those are three guys that last year, Rogers particularly because he was on the sidelines with the transfer, couldn't really depend on. Ballard was injured. Abide was kind of an end-of-the-bench guy, got some minutes here and there. But uh, I guess that goes to show you when guys you know, find roles, they can flourish. Yeah, your thoughts? No, if you're put in a role and you know your role, the other thing is is that you got to be told that okay, this is your role, go play. Don't have to be looking over your shoulder all the time, right? Because once you once somebody thinks okay, this is my role, and then the coach says, and we're going to see how it goes, no good, because you know, because then you're like you're playing not to make a mistake instead of playing to make a play, so. If that's how they're going to do it, and these are their guys' roles, this is what we're doing, here's where we're at, I think it'll be a lot better for the players in Wichita State in general. That's Kobe Rogers looked, how I see looked amazing last night. He was pulling up from three. He was making turnaround jumpers. He was uh, getting into the mid-range and hitting shots. Uh, he was extremely impressive. He was by far and clearly the best player on the court. Uh, like I said, those other two guys had some moments. Xavier Bell early, hit a couple shots. It was good to see. The good thing about the Shockers is, I guess good in a way, that there's not a ton of depth. So a guy like Isaac Abide, who has been waiting uh, for a chance, is going to get a chance. Everybody's going to get a chance to play for Wichita State, especially when Bijan Cortez is out. Uh, 
with the potential academic issue. They're probably not going to get the waiver on Ronnie DeGray, their Missouri transfer. So you're, if you're on Wichita State and you're a scholarship player, uh, except for one of the freshmen, I think, you're going to play. Well, they had six guys that played 25 minutes or more. Right. And we can go back a few years and you couldn't find guys that would be playing 25 to 30 minutes, maybe one. You got to be, you, and I'm a firm believer just from playing a sport that you have to be playing. You can't be in and out playing 18 minutes and expect to Hard grow. to get continuity that way. Well, that plus it's just a rhythm. Right. You know, you got to be in a rhythm. So you need your guys on the floor that are going to play all the time. And then if you get an injury or something, you just plug somebody in there. So, I mean, it's the first game. Obviously, uh, the outcome that everybody was looking for happened. Guys that were hoping would step up, stepped up in the game one. And we'll see how it goes from here. But as a start, pretty good start. Very I would good say. start. Yeah, pretty good can't, start. Can't complain. Um, they were a seven and a half point favorite. I think it went to nine and a half uh, once that uh, injury for Lipscomb's. I think he's a preseason player of the year in their conference. Uh, once that news came out, and then Lipscomb just had nothing for Wichita State. They tried to shoot their way into it and could not. Uh, 6,286 at the Roundhouse last night. Uh, what do you have on that? Is that discouraging? Is that a number that you think will go up? Because that's Paul Mills' first game. This was a fan base that was excited to get him in. Uh, and a lot of people, unfortunately, or however you look at it, were excited that Isaac Brown was no longer with the program. So how do you look at uh, drawing 6,200? I think people are waiting. But why? I don't know. If you're asking me, I'm thinking people are just waiting to see how things turn out. Am I surprised? Yeah. I mean, for years, I mean, you couldn't get a ticket to, that, to those games, any game at Wichita State. And then the last few years, like the home opener, other than last year, it's usually packed. So what's going on? I, I have no idea. I have no clue. I just wonder what happened. I'm surprised. Yeah, because I usually... am very surprised that they only had 6,200 in there. But why? You got me. They you play... got me. I think that my only theory is I think people are waiting to see how things turn out and what kind of team it is, how they play, and are they fun enough to go watch. Well, I just don't get it. I don't get it because... And I'm not blasting anybody. You know, I wasn't at the game last night. No, me neither. Um, so I'm, I'm not either. But it's just weird to me because it seemed like a lot of people were waiting for a coaching change. Some people may have been waiting to turn the page on the Greg Marshall era. Some people may have been waiting for uh, a guy who, to come in who's had uh, success and been to the NCAA tournament. Um, there's a lot of waiting that is now complete, right? They're, the waiting process is just about, except seeing what the product on the floor looks like, it seemed like Shocker fans typically, and I don't know this to be a fact, but it seems like when Turgeon came aboard, especially when Greg Marshall came aboard, that fans really liked being on the ground floor of that because they saw that something would be built. And uh, I don't know, just in, in day one, game one, at least, uh, Shockers haven't completely grabbed a hold of the community yet. Well, that could be the other problem, too, is that they're building stuff, and the problem with basketball now is, and I mentioned this yesterday, but it's the portal. So you have so much turnover, new players, people maybe just waiting to see. Yeah, I know. but You, I don't... you, you don't get used to going for two years and seeing five or six guys that you know that you watch all the time, and you know you're going to see them again. So now it's just not – you don't have that cohesiveness between the fans and the players because it's always changing. I just Does that make sense? I, a little, but it changes with throughout college basketball. But a lot of times in years past, Jeff, you know that, until the uh, portal changed and all the NIL stuff and everything else – you bring guys in, they'd be there for three or four years. So the fans go watch, and they see these guys grow, and they see how much better they are, and they're used to watching them. And the, you feel like you know them a little bit as a fan. I guess. When, when is now, it's like, well, I don't know. I know Kenny Poto. Why isn't that? I know uh, Poto, and I, I mean, Rogers was here, but I never saw him play last year. So, uh, well, I'll just wait and see. I mean, that, maybe that's it. I, I'm throwing, I'm just, 
I'm throwing spitballs at the wall, seeing if it's going to stick. Yeah, I, don't I don't know. I, I don't have any answers really either. I mean, ever since. But I think that may be part of the problem, too. I I might be out in left field without a glove. I mean, it wouldn't be the but first I mean, time. How many diehard Shocker fans are there? That's an unanswerable. 6,200. You think all those were diehards? Um, maybe. Uh, because, I don't know. We always talk about how Wichita State is like the community thing. But is it? No, well, I'd still say it probably is. I'd like it to be. I, I still think it, it is. I just think it's uh, first game. Who knows? Who knows? Well, they play again Thursday, um, and then they have the friends game, and then they won't be back home until November 25th, so it'll be a couple weeks. And I guess we'll see then because they will have played some difficult games. They're coming back. Uh, Norfolk State, which is okay. Richmond has had some moments. You know, and then the schedule really gets hard after that. Most of it not at home. All right, we'll take a break right now. We uh, pick up Shockers and KU, K-State basketball uh, later on in the show. I have to say I didn't watch KU or K-State. But uh, I got the general gist and uh, have some thoughts. Uh, next is Matt Beeler, the head coach of Conway Springs. He has his football team uh, in the quarterfinals of the 1A tournament. And we'll catch up with Matt on the other side of this break. Stay with us. Bob and Jeff. This is the Bob and Jeff Show on 97.5 and 1240 KFH. Let's go to the IHOP hotline, Jason, brought to you by IHOP, now serving pumpkin spice pancake combo. Two pumpkin spice pancakes made with real pumpkin and seasonal spices, crowned with creamy whipped toppings, served with two bacon strips or two pork sausage links, two eggs, and hash browned. Woo! Should be full after that. That's the show. Matt Beeler, our guest, uh, the head coach of... Conway Springs, he's in his 15th year with the Cardinals, a state champion back in 2011, and Conway Springs plays in the 1A quarterfinals this Friday. How are you, Coach? I'm doing great. Thank you. So, yeah, I'll start with uh, that, I guess. You're in, the, you're in the quarterfinals. You've won eight in a row. What, did it t- just take a couple weeks for things to click for this team? How do you, how do you uh, kind of uh, uh, evaluate the winning streak recently? Well, you look at, like last year, we uh, our first games of the year, our first three are against um, uh, three opponents that are um, a class above us in our league, and our, our league has done a great job this year. Uh, you know, uh, Cheney is undefeated this year in our league, and then uh, Garden Plain and, and Kingman were the two that beat us, and, and the only ones that had beat them before the playoffs happened to be uh, Cheney. So we felt like um, – we went against two really good opponents early on, and we um, and, and we didn't come out on top in those, but we learned a lot about ourselves in those games. Do you think that's good, Coach? Do you like that? You play play some tough opponents early, and it, it lets the guys know where they're at? I really think, you know, playing in that tough league and, and, and those things, it, it shows players that you cannot um, – you can't make the mental mistakes. You can't turn the ball over and, and – um, you can't uh, have all the penalties and things like that against a great a great program. Talking with uh, Matt Beeler, the head football coach at uh, Conway Springs. Conway Springs eight and two. So you got Marion this week. How do you uh, stack that one up? What do you, what have you seen from them on film? How do you feel like you match up with them? You know they went up to Smith Center in a place that's really tough to play, and they just uh, they just handled business and and. Uh, and really took it to them. Um, you know, they, they play outstanding defense. They're very physical. They've got three guys in the backfield that can all go the distance running the ball. So we're going to have to play error-free football and, and um, you know, work our tails off to slow them down. Well, Coach, why don't you give us a little rundown on some of your players. Who's really stepped up for you this year? We have uh, – Braden Coons was uh, last year's 1A player of the year on defense. Um He's um, got uh, 90 tackles this year already, and in, in those 10 games, and um, and he also is on our offensive side of the ball. Is um, has over 2,000 yards rushing. Um, he's averaging about 11 yards a carry, and you know, the, the, with his ability to go the distance and and uh, have those big games with our offensive line paving the way for him up front, really um, bodes well for us, and not only just. Uh, 
having him, we have uh, another senior, Nathan Bernston, who is get, gaining a lot of hard yards inside the tackles. He's got 550 yards on the year, and and, um, and uh, he l- runs most of those into a, into a place where there's a bunch of linemen waiting him uh, on defense because they're really trying to stack the box. And then Isaac Winter, a junior, has um, – 7.8 yards a carry and he's got about 590 yards so we feel those three have done a really good job um, especially uh, with that line opening up hole for him. Matt Beeler our guest uh, from Conway Springs so you know obviously Conway Springs first and foremost almost almost exclusively a running team it, is that what uh, your success depends on year to year uh, is whether you have a good running back or not or is it you coach these guys up? Is it the system itself? Is it linemen getting in the weight room and, like you said, opening holes for these guys? Or is it just kind of a, a combination of all of those things? Well, again, I think these kids have done a tremendous job of, of buying into what my coaches and, and I have, have, have sold to them over the years. You know, I've got a coaching staff that's been with us um, the whole time. And, you know, since 2001, most of us have all been together. And two of the coaches were uh, previous players. and. Then we added one new coach this year who's bought into everything we do. Um, so I have a lot of confidence in what my coaches do with them um, and get these guys on the same page. But those players really want to, to be the next guy that goes out and, and carries the tradition along. Um, and the linemen uh, know their job up front, and they know that to be unselfish, and they have to work hard at that, just like we have a kid that moved from, a, from an end position to a line position, and he didn't bat an eye when he had to switch numbers um, to, a, to a line position number. Coach, I got to ask, uh, you know, you mentioned that uh, you, you hired former players and stuff or to help out. And is that something that you've done throughout your career is, is former players and bring them in to, to learn the coaching aspect? And then on the other side of it, I got to think that for the guys that are, that are playing, it's a lot easier to talk to those guys that, were, that have played and that were playing on this team before, isn't it? Yeah, and you know it's fortunate that I've been able to to be here since 1998. I mean, this is I, I came here a long time ago, and um, it's been a great community and great place to where I raised my family and um, got to know all these guys. And as we all coach together, those guys have stayed with me. And and uh, as I've went from a defensive coordinator up to a head coach, and um, and then you know, like I said, with the former player, one of them was back in 1998 when he played here. So. He's been here a long time as well um, since he came back on the staff around 2008. So um, we, we've just been uh, kind of uh, the, the it, we don't want to fix it if it's not broken kind of mentality. We keep working hard at those things that we know works well. And we get these coaches here in the summer to work with these kids. And um, I think that's just bode well for our team. So, yeah, you personally have been a part of, I think, seven uh, state championships uh, but all of those were in 3A. What's it been like uh, to go to 1A? And what have, what do you see just in the community that maybe uh, where the numbers just haven't been as as big at the school? Well, we sure we've dropped some numbers. Um, you know, since the, the days we were in 3A, we had uh, about 115 more students in the school. Um, you know, I don't know exactly why uh, some of these some of the schools outside areas are. Our drop in enrollment because we feel like we've got a, a, a wonderful school, um, uh, great administration, great support all the way through, and we, we sure hope more people uh, come to school and, and live down here. But, again, um, uh, you know, I think that um, with that being said, some of the stuff with our – and we went to 2A for a while and then to 1A, we've been in the playoffs. We've, we've been to the regionals and the sectionals and last year the substate. And, um, you know, coming up just a little bit short, and, and um, those are things that are on the back of our mind and wanting to, to try and, uh, you know, complete the whole, uh, the whole season the way we want to go. Do you know the last year that Conway Springs had a losing record? I'm not positive of that. Um, that uh, fortunately, we have not had one since nine, 1998. You have so not. The last one was 1995 at 4-5 and five under Coach Harvey Goodman. Okay. Just a little piece of trivia out there. You've yeah, you've had a winning record every year. You've been there a couple of years even before seven state titles. So yeah, quite a quite a run of uh, success. So what do you like about Conway Springs? When you you know twenty five years ago, when probably you didn't have the perspective you have now, was it? Hey, I'm I'm going to be here for a while. You know, you first come in as your job, and you're thinking I'll be here a couple of years, and I'll probably be moving on, but. Um... 
you know, I was able to coach with some great names, um, and Mark Bliss, uh, who taught me a lot, uh, Fred Cottrell, um, who was uh, never a head coach, but basically brought along a lot of head coaches over the years, and um, and then working for my administration with Clay Murphy and, and Brent Harrell, and those guys have all been, you know, great people that have um, been, been fun to work for, and I feel like um, the community here helps raise kids. Um, you know, all those people that um, they come out to the games, they support us very well. Um, you know, sure, they have some criticism for you, just like everybody, but uh, but they support football and they want to be there and, and uh, see how the next team's going to be year in, year out. Absolutely. Well, congratulations on the success that you've had, not only this year, but uh, the 15 years you've been head coach, the 25 years that you've been uh, part of the program. Conway Springs, certainly a, a stalwart program in the state of Kansas. So thanks a lot for coming on the show and good luck Friday. Thank you. I appreciate it. There you go. A little 1A football talk. It's that it's time weird. of year. It's weird that Conway Springs is in 1A to me. I know you said that and I was like, yeah, it doesn't I didn't sense. want to correct you because you're always right, which right. we've went over many times. We have, but yeah. I was wrong once when I thought I made a mistake and it turned out that I had. Yeah. <laughs> I love that so much. Well, I, I know wish I'd thought of that. I know. you. That is all you. That is all you all day, every day. Happy days. Good for you. Thank you. Yeah, if it makes you feel good. Conway Springs has Marion in 1A. We've got uh, Medicine Lodge in the 1A tournament. Uh, area schools just all over the place. Uh, 3A has a bunch. Andale, Cheney, Collegiate still playing. Who do you like? Uh you think Andale and Cheney win and play again? I would think so. Clay Center's pretty good, but I think uh, Cheney gets them. Collegiate, obviously pretty good. Andale has beaten them this year already. It, it was a little closer than maybe expected. So who wins the rematch? Probably at Cheney, definitely at Cheney, uh, when, when and if Andale and Cheney play again. Well, Got to go with the team that won earlier, I guess. It should be a good game. You're going to go Cheney again. I don't know. Take them at home. With it spreads two and a half. I take the home team. It's what I do. All right. Well, maybe we'll have to put that in our picks on Thursday. Well, that's probably not a bad idea. Wouldn't that be fun? Pick oh, a couple of high be. school games? It will be. You know, oh. you, haven't, uh, you haven't had a chance, or have you, to talk about your Mays Eagles. Did I call that? Call what? That they'd beat Liberal. Well, I, we were all hoping that. Well, I mean, I was all hoping. Everybody was hoping they'd beat Liberal. I mean, it's a we were all hoping, close but, did I, but did I call it? What do you mean, did I call it? Did I call it? That's what I'm asking. We had Gary did, Guzman on the show. I said, hey, Liberal's a winnable game. You'll probably win that one. You're so smart. You're just the, I'm one just of the, asking. I don't remember that exactly. But if you say that's what you said, then I'm in. It's close enough. I mean, I know I picked them. And Why now, wouldn't I? Now they got Eisenhower. Now they've got Goddard Eisenhower in a game. Goddard and Eisenhower. I, I don't know how they lost to Goddard. Uh, That's what everybody's been telling me. Goddard's good. Don't get me wrong. But I don't understand why they beat, uh, especially 22 to 14, a game where Eisenhower didn't score for some reason much. I don't know. I just didn't understand that result. Goddard's good. I like Goddard. I love Tom Beeson, their coach. No ill will, no nothing against Goddard. I was just surprised. And then, obviously, I was surprised when Mays beat Goddard. So was everybody at Mays. Not as surprised when Mays beat Liberal because Liberals was a soft 8-1. and one. Right. Uh, and then now they've got Eisenhower, and I won't be – Eisenhower should win that game. They should. But this could be one of those momentum things, Jeff. There's no such thing. The Maze Eagles got a little mo on their side. Yeah. And sometimes you, that's all. Why does momentum it takes? last for a week? Uh, it's football. How? I don't know, Jeff. I don't either. So it just might. It just might. That's pretty interesting. I mean, if they win, we're going to thank momentum next week. And on the other side in 5A, I want to talk more about 6A, too. Uh, but you got Capen and Maze South. Should be a Great good one. Game. Should be a good one. What a, what a final four that is. Cape and Mays South, Eisenhower Mays. Love it. Ah, could you imagine Mays, Mays South? For, the, for a chance to play for the state championship of the world. That place will be jam-packed. I might even go to that one. If and the, it'll be against Mill Valley because Mill Valley always plays for the state championship. I think so. I think they're just penciled in, aren't they, every year? Pretty much. It seems like it. 
A little heavy for me, man. But right now we are joined by the first-year head basketball coach at Friends University, Phil McClintock. Phil, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. Thanks for having me. This is your first year, right? I'm not speaking out of turn. I always get worried when I mention facts that I think are true. No, that, that is correct. I started April 11th was my start date, so I'm, I'm pretty new. Yeah, you're a couple games in now. What have been your early impressions of, of not only this job, uh, but your team so far? Well, the job's been great. Everybody here's supportive. Um, you know, our campus is awesome here in Wichita, friends, and uh, the athletic department's super supportive and wa wants to win, so that's awesome. Um, my team, we're st we still got a lot to find out. Um, went on the road and lost one, uh, played okay against a good team, and then we won big at home. Um, and so uh, everybody's new and obviously my first year, so we got a lot to learn about our team, so. Well, yep. give uh, give the listeners a little bit of uh, insight on some of the guys that you got there and uh, what they'll see possibly this weekend. Yeah, well, we return a lot from last year. They didn't have a very good season last year, only five wins. Um, but luckily, we were, they played really young, so we return a ton of those guys. Um, an all-conference guy in Tim Barbary. Um, he's a fifth-year guy, been at Friends for, for a while. So, um, you know, having that stability at the center spot is big for us. Um, you guys probably know Steele Chapman. Um, he's starting at the one for us, and he was uh, he was at Wichita State a few years ago at Hutch Juco last year, um, and he's going to do a little bit of everything for us. Um, those are probably our, our highlight guys. Keon Hutton is a, kid, is a Wichita kid that's starting for us that a lot of people around, around the area probably know. He's going to be a really good player this year. So a lot of Wichita kids. Uh, Christian Williams, another one. So um, a lot of returners and, and a lot of new guys. We're, we're just kind of trying to figure it out. Talking with Phil McClintock, uh, Fred, Friends University uh, basketball coach. So you mentioned a lot of Wichita guys, and that is true. Is that going to be kind of the area of your recruiting efforts mostly? Is it start in Wichita and then move outward? Yeah, well, I mean, I think you have to be that way if you're at Friends in any sport. But, I mean, in basketball, if you look back at the tradition they have, they have a, a rich tradition of winning. And if you look at almost every one of those teams, they were highlighted by a a Wichita kid that was either a bounce back from a higher level or just a, a high school kid, a bunch of high school kids that have, you know, came here and, and had success. So I think, you know, I actually have not recruited. I've, I've been in Ottawa the last eight years uh, by Kansas City. So I my, haven't recruited Wichita a ton, but I think that's where definitely where I'm going to start. And then you got to kind of sprinkle in some, some guys from outside as well. So, yep. Well, Coach, obviously you're playing WSU. How did that come about, and, and what are you looking forward to in that? I think it's fantastic that you guys are playing. Yeah, I'm super excited to play them. Um, it was actually one of their ex-assistant coaches that reached out to me early in, uh, I think it was in even April. I mean, sent an email, hey, they want to play in the future. And then I think it was like uh, July or August where he sent another email, hey, you interested in playing this year? And I was, <laughs> yeah, that was the first thing that I said. I said, hey, anytime. We're open this year because my schedule wasn't set, so um, knowing we were going to get a check for that game. Um, <laughs> and obviously just play, playing at a higher level, um, playing in front of a bunch of kids. I mean, sorry, a bunch of fans. It was going to be really special for our team. So, um, And then it kind of just came about. And we had to, we dropped the scrimmage and added this as an exhibition, so it's been awesome. Yeah, so you, it's, it's a tough week. you got Oklahoma City, or weekend especially, Oklahoma City. Uh, you travel there, and then you're com coming back to Wichita to play the Shockers uh, the, the next afternoon on Sunday. So how do you get your guys ready for something like that? Um, well, I mean, we, we're, we're worried about – we have this whole week of practice, so coming off of a win. So we're trying to get better and, and working on things we need to work on. Um, that Oklahoma City game is going to be a tough one on the road. Um, we play at 4 p.m. We'll come back. I mean, so it's not like it's a, it's a 7 or 8 o'clock game, so we'll be back in plenty of time. And then uh, the quick turnaround for, for, with a one o'clock game at Wichita State, which is is pretty crazy. But I, I mean, we're going to be as prepared as we can, and I, I think we're going to go in and um, every game you go into, you try to win. But we're going to have fun with it. We're going to play play a lot of guys and give a lot of guys that experience in playing in Coke Arena. Yeah, I don't think that the guys will have a problem getting up for that game, even though it's going to be a quick turnaround. I would think that, like you said. The guy's got to be they've, – they've had to have had that game circled on the calendar. There's no question about it. Oh, there's no no doubt. And it's going to be a less is more game for us. Just And a lot of times we play in classics at all levels where, you you know, you're going to play back-to-back -back games. And that next game, I mean, we're going to we're going to prepare for it, but it's going to be less is more for us. And we're going to go out 
we're not going to try to do too much as coaches. We're going to let them play and let them have a good time and um, just play basketball. So, Talking with uh, Phil McClintock, head uh, men's basketball coach at Friends. So how are you looking at uh, the KCAC this year? How, do, how does it stack up in your opinion? And what do uh, the Friends Falcons have to do to kind of uh, get, in, get back into that mix a little bit over the next couple of years? Yeah, we have a lot of work to do. It's, it's tough this year um, just because we returned. Basically, four teams made the national tournament, and all four of those teams uh, from last year returned a bunch of guys. So we have a, we're really top-heavy. And then we added this year of Angel out of Springfield, Missouri, and they made the national tournament last year and finished second in the heart uh, of America Conference, which is a really tough conference. So, I mean, it's loaded this year. Um, we're going to battle, and I have, we have the talent, and I, I'm really excited about our guys. And so it's just everything's so new that, you know, we haven't been in a game where we're in the fire yet and it's a close game, and that's when you kind of figure out what you're made of. And so I know we'll, we'll, we'll have those games here coming up in the next stretch. So, But, I mean, we're really trying to learn and grow this year um, and obviously, hopefully, we're, we're super competitive, and then in, in the future, we're looking to win and, and make national tournament. So, Well, Coach, give us a little background on yourself. You said you were in Ottawa for a while, where you're from, where you went to school, where'd you play, and uh, ultimately, how you actually ended up here in Friends. Yeah, I'm uh, actually a KCAC guy. I, I'm a four-year KCAC player. I played at Ottawa University. Um, I'm from southwest Missouri, and... So I left. I was a GA at William Woods University for two years. Then I was a high school coach for three years. Um, and then I was able to come back as an assistant for the last eight years at Ottawa. Um, so, I mean, Friends, is, it's a place I'm familiar with. Obviously, I've, I've you know played here, um, played against Coach Saber, who is still here. I think he's probably one of the main reasons why I'm back. Um, and then Dean Jaderston was actually the head men's coach at Sterling whenever I was a, a player. And so I was playing when Coach Faber and Coach Jaderson were both here in the conference as coaches. So that familiarity, I think, helped, you know, and obviously having some success in the league as an assistant helped as well. We're talking with Phil McClintock from Friends. Uh, the Falcons are 1-1 one and one in the early start of the basketball season. So your bio here says uh, you've been to, uh, as a camp coach with uh, the KU Bill Self basketball camp since 2012. I'm just curious what that experience has been like and uh, what it's been like to – have you been around Coach Self or and just how much uh, you've uh, gotten good information from fellow coaches? Oh, it's great. I mean, that's one of my favorite favorite weeks. I usually work two weeks, and my kids have gotten old enough to where they're there now, and they're able to go, and I'm able to coach them as well. But learning from I, – I do – I've been around Coach Self a bunch and watched his practices in the summer, which is – you know, they basically give us free access to the program uh, in the summer as camp coaches – um, I wouldn't say we're, we're close friends, but he would probably <laughs> recognize me. Um, one of my favorite things they do, the assistant coaches there do chalk talks though, uh, during the day at camp. So, I mean, we're able to go in and talk about recruiting, talk about, you know, basically everything day to day with the program and just seeing that program and how it's run. I mean, I don't know that I can, I can emulate that here, but I definitely will use a lot of the things that I learned there during camp. So. Well, well, uh, Bill Self uh, kind of redid his lifetime contract today, so I want you to march into Rob Ramsire's office and tell him <laughs> that you want the same deal. Well, let me win a few more games than I've won. <laughs> I mean, I know I won that one game, but maybe you know, maybe a conference championship or something. Maybe I'll do that. So don't yeah. tell Rob I said that. Don't let it slide. Get in there now, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> I like that. That's, well, that's a great attitude. Well, thanks, Coach. We appreciate it. Uh, glad you're off to a, a, a good start at Friends, and we wish you luck as the, your your years continue. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on. All right, thanks a lot. Lifetime deal for Bill Self. Is that what it was? I didn't hear about this. Five year rolling <laughs> contract. He had a he had a lifetime deal previously. So, so he got another lifetime deal. And he redid it to get more money. Hmm. All right. Well. And maybe Phil McClintock will have that someday at Friends or elsewhere. Well, there's a possibility. I've signed a lifetime deal with uh KFH. A lifetime deal? Yeah. Wow. Five-minute rolling contract. So five any, minutes. If I do poorly at five minutes, they cut it off. They can cut you off right at break, right after, right before we go to break, and then you're gone before, That's before break's done. Or I'm here forever. Their choice. Well, I'll have to talk to Tony, I guess. You ready for your, another hour of this? Oh, can't wait. You think we'll play a game at 325? Well, supposedly that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> it's supposed to be, but will it happen?
Well, it didn't last Tuesday, so it but probably we had a won't. good last Tuesday. We had callers. We had people really amped up. We did. I'd like to get people amped up again, but is there anything to get amped up about? I don't right know. Now? Is there? Well, I guess maybe. I don't know. Well, I don't know either. We'll find out. Stay with us. If you're amped up, give us a call. Please. It doesn't We're... have to be about sports. It can be about At anything. All. Of course not. Absolutely not. Stay with us. Hour number two coming up. <laughs> Jason Dude is here. It's Bob and Jeff on KFH. <laughs>